This next case is a fascinating middle-aged lady with a fairly dense cataract, small pupil, and we saw in the clinic that the pupil dilated poorly. Uh, she had all the markings of somebody who'd been on Flomax, but she has no history of Flomax usage or any of the uh, bladder medications that sometimes women have to go on. So this, uh, we knew in advance this would be an interesting uh, case with regard to poor dilation. You can see here I've got a little bit of uh, dilation from viscomedriasis along with adding epi sugar cane, but it's, uh, it's going to be pretty hard to maintain uh, a, a significant pupil size. So I'm maximizing my rexus here, my uh, continuous curvilinear capsularexis to, uh, to mimic the uh, pupil border. And uh, then I'm going to do a, a meticulous hydrodissection. This is for cortical cleaving, but I want to make sure that I don't do it so aggressively that I get an iris prolapse. You can see I'm going to be extremely respectful of the uh, pupil and the iris. And uh, in fact, I'm going bevel down right now in an effort to maintain maximum occlusion and reduce turbulence that could end up injuring the iris. So I'm going ahead and I'm kind of maximizing occlusion. And now I've flipped it over where I've, I've got the port superiorly, a couple bubbles there. Um, but I'm going to go deep. I don't worry about going long. I want to go deep so that I can come in with a second instrument here and do a nice cracking. Okay, I've, I've gone through the, uh, the nucleus. I'm going to do a second crack here to get a quadrant. I'll switch now to a quadrant removal setting on phaco emulsification. Again, maximum occlusion so that I don't have a lot of turbulence and risk uh, aspirating the iris and injuring the iris or the sphincter here. So I'm going to try to do uh, uh, stay in a, a very safe zone here, um, move the tissue around again maintaining occlusion with nucleus and epinucleus here doing very slow motion type phaco emulsification it gets also a low flow taking my time no rush here at all uh, just taking apart the nucleus trying to uh, to not injure the iris this patient got over twice as much dilation medication as we would normally give so what I've set up here is the residual cortex. Very important here if you're going to use a straight IA tip to, uh, to go ahead and, um, and uh, remove the sub-incisional cortex first. And so that's what I'm doing here. And then uh, I'm working my way around from that sub-incisional cortex. and removing it uh, meticulously. I'm going to check and make sure I don't have any, uh, any residual cortex in the, uh, in the capsular fornix. I'm going to go ahead and put in some viscoelastic here to expand the capsular bag create some safety between the cornea, iris, and during the lens insertion here using the one-piece uh, highly biocompatible columnar plate lens, gently putting it in through the, uh, through the small capsular rexus. Uh, you have to be careful if you're going to use a silicone lens or one that is going to uh, uh, open up very quickly as that could tear the capsule. Removing the viscoelastic, Again, taking some extra time doing that here so that me, to make sure I don't have any trapped behind the implant. I'm going to be moving the implant side to side, pressing posteriorly and trying to squeeze that viscoelastic anteriorly for complete removal. And uh, once I'm uh, confident that I've, I'm confident that I've removed it all, I'm going to go ahead and hydrate the paracentesis to make sure I don't have any residual particles there, but also close the wound and then the main wound, and then check the pressure. You want it kind of firm, but not too firm. You want to make sure that it's firm so that you don't have uh, an opportunity for inward uh, migration of fluid or one-way valve inward. So 
Anyway, uh, that uh, completes a very nice procedure. The patient's done extremely well. Thank you.